Farewell to you, my own true love. I am going far away. I am bound for California, and I hope that I'll return someday. So it's falling of my own true love, and when I return, united we will be. It's not the leaving of a Liverpool at grazing, but my darling, when I think of thee. Hello. Thank you so much for being with us here today at Penobscot Marine Museum. Leave questions and comments below. Thank you so much for responding and telling us which painting you wanted more. Liverpool got the most votes. Liverpool has a long and fascinating history, ancient history, including Celtic rock engravings, Iron Age coins with horse imagery from thousands of years ago, Romans, Vikings. In the year 1207, King John made Liverpool a borough, officially allowing trade, and Liverpool became a huge shipbuilding center in the 17th century. The first known wet dock was installed in 1715, a dock with uh, locks that holds water in to keep a ship afloat, even at low tide. Great wealth was made from over 5,000 voyages, shipping 1.5 million enslaved Africans and selling them in the Americas. By the 19th century, Liverpool handled 80% of trade between US and Britain as well as trade with Asia, the Caribbean, South America. So you can imagine the docks and shipyard were huge and bustling with 20,000 vessels moving 3 million tons of stuff. Many Irish Catholics lived and worked on the docks and tensions between Catholics and Protestants simmered for decades in the 19th century culminating in riots in 1909. This painting is by Robert Salmon, or Salmon, in 1809. At this time, uh, Europe was in the midst of the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, French, British, Spanish vessels attacked each other throughout, both uh, privateers and naval vessels. So the, the Betsy, one of these small uh, brigs on either side of the ship. The Phoenix is the other one. Betsy was originally French, and then it was taken by the British and turned into a British vessel. All three of these vessels are owned by William Parr and Robert Faggett of Liverpool. We don't know the name of the big ship in the center, but uh, it's heavily armed. You can see these guns sticking out and you can see nice details in the mariners on the ship so much that you can even see some of the clothing that the mariners are wearing. So we have two paintings by the same artist of a similar subject. This is also Liverpool and so it's fun to compare these two paintings. This one um, also has a ship in the center and a couple of smaller vessels on either side. It's also got a few guys in a, in a rowboat there. This has really detailed look at this, the city. You can see the docks all along here and many, many hundreds and probably thousands of masts sticking up lots of churches. This domed building here is St. Paul's. St. Paul's church records also show the influx of Africans through the list of baptisms. 
And it's a little glimpse into the reality of, of all of those enslaved Africans coming in. This tower here is uh, the Tower of St. Nicholas. It's the, the oldest church foundation in Liverpool. It goes back to at least 1250. And uh, successive buildings were constructed on top and then got old themselves. The spire uh, that we can see in the painting here was originally built in 1746 and then was decrepit enough by 1810 that the, as the bells were being rung one Sunday morning, the entire spire crashed down, killing 25 people, sadly, mostly children. You can see that it's really close to the docks. And the courtyard actually sometimes floods from the Mersey River. Uh, it was a place that sailors have often gone to to pray for a safe return in their very dangerous occupation. There's, uh, in addition to the other church spires, there's one other domed building. This one is City Hall. Liverpool, uh, that area has large clay deposits. And so there have been pottery works uh, for a long time in Liverpool, going back to at least the 17th century. This picture is made in Liverpool. There's Andrew Leach on the back. And this uh, brig that you see here is the Friendship. It was built in 1802 in what is now Winterport uh, by William Lathery, who moved to Winterport in 1799 after originally starting a shipyard in Camden in 1790. So Camden and Winterport in the 1790s, this is the very beginnings of Europeans settling in this area very early on. Andrew Leach kept the first general store in Searsport in a building right across uh, Main Street from our gallery, which is on the corner, Main Street, also called Route 1. Leach was a merchant and part owner in many local vessels. Every ship was owned by multiple people. It was a little bit of insurance in a very risky business. If the ship was lost, it was not one person who lost everything but several people who lost just part interest. They also had actual insurance, what we would call insurance in the 19th century, but uh, it was very limited and most vessels were only partly insured. This is the Castine built ship, St. Leon, uh, built in 1835. In this painting, it is sailing on the Mersey River, which flows past Liverpool. St. Leon was uh, built in Samuel Noyes' shipyard uh, for merchants Witherly and Jarvis. Um, they are also from Castine. We have the receipt um, in our collections for this painting, which also lists the 50 pence for the packing crate. The St. Leon uh, sailed several times to Liverpool. The ship carried fish and ice to New Orleans, and then cotton from New Orleans to Liverpool, buying salt in Liverpool for the fishermen in Penobscot Bay for preserving fish. So once again, uh, enslaved Africans are involved. They are the ones doing all of the intense labor required to process the cotton that's then taken to Liverpool, be uh, spun and woven in uh, the factories there. Uh, this is Perch Rock Fort, which I think is a great name. Perch Rock Fort in my house here. This is the view that you would see from the shore of Liverpool. The artist John Hughes uh, was born in Liverpool and listed as an artist in 1836. In addition to living in Liverpool, he also lived across the river in Wirral 
and stayed near the Mersey River most of his life. He also painted houses as well as maritime subjects. This is a medicine chest. You can see the, the uh, tag here, made by Thompson and Kepper, homeopathic chemists at Liverpool and Birkenhead, England. The medicine chest was used on board the ship Lucy A. Nichols, Captain David Nichols. It was built in Brewer in 1875. Lucy Nichols is a daughter of Jeremiah Merthew who built his home on Church Street and is now one of the buildings that makes up our museum. Her daughter Clara, we saw a portrait of in the Dolly Smith Peak. Her dad, Captain David Nichols lived across the street from Merthew in another of our museum buildings. His house is currently being used by the Maine Ocean School, a charter high school preparing students for maritime careers. Uh, so captains took care of everyone on the ship and sometimes that meant administering medicine. Disease could spread rapidly in the tight quarters of the sailors. 19th century was Medis 19th century medicine was based on close observation. So they had figured out some things by that, but much of our medical knowledge that we have today had not been discovered yet. Um, I can't read all of these, but this might be tincture of calendula. This looks like it might be camphor. I don't know, what do you think? Do you? Would you want to be a sailor um, who's sick 100 miles away from home and there's no doctor, just your ship captain who maybe has a book he can look at to refer to? Um, I'm not sure I would want that. What do you think? Let us know. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, put your questions and comments below. Next week, we have three detailed prints of Pastine, Bucksport, and Belfast. I'm looking forward to that. They're really beautiful prints, and there's a lot to see in there. Thank you very much for spending your time with us today at Penobscot Marine Museum. Thank you to our members and our donors. This programming has been made possible in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities, exploring the human endeavor. Oh, and there's a very cool uh, museum in uh, Liverpool, the Merseyside Maritime Museum. And it has a really great website which all, with all kinds of cool images and information about the history there. So we'll put the link in uh, here and take a look, it's neat stuff. Thank you again and take care.